And because he's gifted each of us uniquely and individually, what God has put in you, he wants to bring out of you. We're not a safe. We're not a piggy bank. He didn't give us the gift so that we could just hoard it, sit on it, save it. He's gifted us. He's put stuff in us so that he could bring it out of us, that his goodness would be seen, that glory would come back to him. You and I are not accidents, no matter what somebody might have told us. We're uniquely created with different gifts that God knew, that his purpose was planned long before you and I took our first breath on planet Earth. He had a purpose. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. This is what unifies us. This is where our unity comes from. We're not the same, but we are one. That's unity. There's a variety of gifts, but they come from the same source. There's a variety of serving, but they're to the same Lord. And God works differently in each of us. Our lives are not gonna mirror. Our walks are not gonna mirror each other. But we trust that we're serving the same God and he's using those things for his purpose. It's the same God who's at work. And because he's gifted each of us uniquely and individually, what God has put in you, he wants to bring out of you. We're not, we're not a safe. We're not a piggy bank. He didn't give us the gift so that we could just hoard it, sit on it, save it. He's gifted us. He's put stuff in us so that he could bring it out of us. That his goodness would be seen, that glory would come back to him. You, you and I are not accidents, no matter what somebody might have told us. We're uniquely created with different gifts that God knew that his purpose was planned long before you and I took our first breath on planet Earth. He had a purpose. You ever get a gift for Christmas or your birthday and you open it up and then you're like, what's this for? How do I use this? That's not how God gifts us. God's gift for you comes with a plan and a purpose. We know exactly what he wants us to do with it. He's gonna lead us in it. And some of us have gone through the process and we've served for a long time. So we have a good understanding of our gifting. And I always encourage people when they're trying to discover, like, what does God really want me to do? How do I fulfill the purpose? How do I serve? Like, let's just start with what you like. What are your passions? God wired you some way. Your interests are different than mine. So, so what is it about you that makes you unique? What, what, what gets your gears turning? What gets you excited? Because God's probably, he's wired you that way. He's not gonna say, go serve in this way that's completely contradictory to the way he wired you. So what he's giving you, he wants to bring out of you. And there's all kinds of assessments that people can take to discover, better discover, take that next step in understanding their gifting and how that would play out in their life. Not just for two hours on a Sunday morning, but every minute of every day. So if you're not aware or you haven't started the journey of trying to discover your gifting and how God would use it, or if you've done it before and you just want a refresher, we, we have an online assessment that you can take. Um, if you wanna take it, I'm gonna ask you to text the word gift, just G-I-F-T. No winky faces, no thumbs up. Somebody always sends these. The software doesn't recognize that. This is software. There's not a person behind a keyboard on this. If you text the word gift, to 330-886-4355, it's gonna auto-respond with a link to that assessment. Take the assessment, it doesn't take long, and it's gonna email you a report. It's pretty in-depth, but it's gonna help you understand how you're gifted, and you're gonna look at that and go, oh, okay. There's probably not gonna be any surprises on it, because you know you. You're just gonna see how that plays a bigger part in God's purpose. And in our giftings, we, people will have already kind of endorsed it, said, you know, you're, you're really good at that. You know, people, people listen to you. Like, you're a good listener. Like, have you noticed how, you know, I mean, your heart really is moved by people. You're a very compassionate person. You're, you're, a, good, you're a good teacher. You know, like, you would have already heard from people that these are your gifts. You just probably didn't put them all together to know that, oh, God wants me to use this for a greater purpose. For his purpose, I can do that. And it becomes our priority then. Jesus said, I came to serve, not to be served. When he answered his, the question about what's the greatest commandment, he says, love God with everything and love your neighbor as yourself. Here's the priority, God first, others, then you. And when we're serving, 
That's the order. It just falls into place. It was Mark 10, 14, where Jesus said, the son of man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. He lived this out. This wasn't just him saying it. He washed his disciples' feet in John chapter 13, which was a degrading job normally reserved for the, for the child of a servant or a slave, that when people would come into the home, that their feet would get washed at the door. They weren't wearing shoes and socks like you and I. They had sandals in a very dusty, dirty environment. This was degrading. And Jesus kneels down and washes the feet of all of his disciples. And in verse 12, he says, after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and he sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, right? I've done the lowest of low when it comes to serving somebody, and I am Lord and teacher. I'm, I'm the top, and I've just taken the bottom position for you. He says, you ought to wash each other's feet. There's nothing you, you can't do. There's nothing you shouldn't do. Don't, don't think, he's telling us, don't, don't, don't think that this need is below you, that you're too good to do that because I just knelt and washed all your feet. So you will do the same. I've given you an example, 15, to follow. Do as I've done to you, which does not sound like this is a suggestion. This is the expectation I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. That in our obedience and in our faithfulness, God blesses us. So when we don't feel like serving, we think, Jesus served me. I must serve others. And this shift in perspective, it changes the way we live because we move from a consumer mindset to a contributor that it's not about what, what can I get, it's about what can I give. We don't engage in an, in an experience like this and go, what, 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 what can I get from this? And oftentimes we do that. People, people come in and, and, and I've been there and we've done it, you go to a church and you're like, does this meet my needs? If I like the music, I'll come back. If I like the teaching, I'll come back. If I like the translation, if I like the kids ministry, I'll come back. But it's about what I can get. But as we get closer to Jesus, as we follow him along in this journey, that perspective has to change from what can I get to what can I give because we cannot outgive God. The more we give, the more we get from him. We tell our kids that giving is better than receiving and they don't believe it. But it's true that the more we give to God, the more we get back from him. There's many times I've not wanted to serve. There's many times where my phone will ring or I'll get a text and something will come up and I can go in and I can, whatever it is, a phone call, go to a hospital, help somebody with an issue. And I think, I don't want to do this right now. It could be a dumb reason. I'm watching a football game. I just don't feel like it. I don't want to be disrupted. And I can tell you that I have failed that test before. But the times where I'm like, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it because I know I should do it. I've never served and thought, man, I regret doing that. I've always felt better on the other side. And then I'm humbled. I can, I can, in my head, I can see myself in my car getting behind the wheel and going, I can't believe I did that again. This was so good for me. I, I helped them, but really they helped me. I, I got blessed. And I would have missed all that if I'd have just sat in my stubbornness. Serving will be inconvenient. It will be difficult. But it's the call. It's what we're expected to do. 